Hello, uh, Michelle Abbott at ICANN, and also whomever she would like to share this video with, and also hello to the Dave and Kathy White family. I, uh, I just received an email from uh, Michelle about having a goal interview or a, you know, review or whatever it is. And uh, I'm trying to gather my thoughts <laughs> on, uh, on what it is I have to say. And I, I, it, it occurred to me that I, I would like for, to make sure that there are a few things uh, that you, I, I want to mention to you because it's important to me that you have some of these things in perspective, okay? Okay, but first I want to let, let you know, look, I've been uh, getting seashells to decorate my activity room here, and I even made myself a seafood dish with clams, mussels, and oysters, and I, I saved the shells, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put them up there. <laughs> it was a delicious dish, too. It was a pasta dish. It's so good. Uh, anyway, uh, I brought to your attention before that I got a drafting table and that I yet need to get a uh, writing mat for this. Otherwise, it'll make an indentation on the wood when I write on it. So you can see there's a, a scratch that already happened from moving this back and forth. A piece of sand fell dirt fell from the ceiling and got caught under this and made a scratch on it. So I want to be careful not to uh, scratch it up or, you know, to make writing indentations on it. See, I have to... I've been thinking through the stages of how to make a leather writing mat. You know, most business people, when they're sitting at their desk, they have a, a square mat that's leather that they write on. And the rest of the table, they have a computer, the coffee, you know, stapler, whatever. But the writing mat is usually made of vinyl or leather. So I'm thinking through about what, how I could either, either craft myself a writing mat or have one custom made. Uh, because I'm going to need more equipment to craft this myself, I have a feeling <coughs> that I'm going to go ahead and order one custom made. Anyways, I wanted to bring this to your attention again because when it comes to furnishing my home, there are many variables to consider about how to prioritize furnishing. If I were to get... See, I mentioned that we have these turkeys that are sitting vigilantly with our mind and they like to... Uh, they like to see opportunity. They like to... <coughs> ruin opportunity. See, if I get this first before other pieces of furniture, it locks a nature. See, subsequently things will be natural because I have this first. If I were to get a sofa and other furnishing, furnishings before this, I would get, I would furnish my home and then inevitably get this later. Then I wouldn't even have the opportunity to use it to design my own furniture. It would be very easy to just not design my own furniture, <laughs> and etc. Do you see what I mean? If I get this first, then it locks it into a different nature. See, so when it comes to furnishing my home, I am going to prioritize the way I, I, need to and want to, to achieve my own goals. Something about designing my own furniture and crafting it and or having it custom made is good for me. It's very good for my mind and very good for my mental health. It's also very good for my soul. It's also very good to help me develop stronger roots to live here longer, perhaps even the rest of my life, which is what would be very, very good. I hope that's very much the case, you know. When we consider the rest of my life, there are these variables to consider. You know, what if, you know, 
the White family were to sell the house to other people? Would I be happy with my new landlords? Would I even have the option to live here? You know, I mean, there are these other variables. There are also other variables that could happen in my favor, such as would I can housing ever at some point have a program with a reduced mortgage program? So, you know, instead of paying rent, the Dave and White Catherine family could sell the house to me, possibly, and it would be a mortgage thing. But, uh, you know, that's, you know, if it, you know, as far as I know, we don't have one at this time, but it could be in the future that might be a possibility that does happen, you see. So during this time, you know, I've now completed one year of a lease and we're now starting on our second year. It is important to not ruin windows of opportunity. It is possible for, a, you know, a mortgage home ownership program to happen. And we wouldn't want to do anything now to ruin the opportunity later, you see. Now, going ahead and doing so later is another variable, see. It could be even years from now, there would be such a program and we could choose not to if we didn't want to. Or we could choose to if we wanted to. But we would want to have the option if we wanted to, you see. We wouldn't want to ruin that option if that is possible for us to do, you see. So doing things at this time to preserve windows of opportunity is important. And the way I furnish, your, furnish my home actually can uh, kind of develop a probability, okay? Like getting this first, then naturally I'm gonna go ahead and design furniture to furnish my home. See, if I got the furniture first and then this, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even use it to design furniture. That window of opportunity is seen. I don't have it anymore because I got the furniture first. <laughs> okay. So I am prioritizing so that things will be natural later. See, later there's going to be a nature because I did this first. Okay. So when it comes to setting goals and achieving them, I want you to have this in perspective. There are a few things that are worth prioritizing now so that it'll lock a nature. Things will be locked into being natural if I do it this way and if we do it this way. Okay, so on to my next video.